Okay, we're ready to start attaching the straps to the gusset. So, here's the gusset, and here's the strap we want to attach. Rather than holding the scratch all upright, which will put a line right next to it, I'm going to hold the scratch all right out, which will put a line underneath it. And that's going to mark where I want my strap to go. And I want a key for my glue. I don't want to go above the lines or outside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these in place. I don't really want that much. I shall then put this back over the line that I've made and apply a bit of pressure. And then re-measure. Happy with that, happy with that, happy with that and leave pressure on that for five minutes until that dries. Then I shall mark it up with the pricking iron and stitch it, and that's done. So, we'll come back to it shortly. Again, using number seven, so I've got seven stitches to an inch, I'm just gonna tap that hole through, so that's my end stitch, and then I'm gonna work back from there. So I've got my mark for my first stitch, straddling the line that I've made. I'm now going to work my way across. So we're done with the short one. Take the inch and a half on, straddle that line and then take it up to our mark. Now what I've done in relation to these straps at the top of the bag is these are going to be quite a bit higher than the row of stitching. So this is going to keep the strap against the gusset and then wrap around the bag like that. So that's going to take quite a lot of strain from the top of the strap and that's going to make sure that the whole row of stitching is taking the weight rather than the strap coming away because the worst thing about the row of stitching at the top is the strap coming away from the bag and that's where it will begin to tear because that strap's going to go across when that happens that's going well above the row of stitching so it's, it's a failure point that's where it could fail if it's going to but including that little strap above the row of stitching which is why I've had it so low I've gone down 50 mil two inches so halfway between the two, an inch in, I can add that and that's going to stop any failure with regard to the stitching. And we'll have a look at that as we put it together. Okay, whilst I've factored this strap going over the shoulder strap, I'm still going to do a back stitch. So the first hole I'm going to make is through the second hole in the row. Centre the thread up, and then stitch one stitch away from me, back to the last hole, and then back towards me. Making sure I don't put the awl back through a hole I've already got a thread in. So I've got four bits of thread there, so it's a little bit stronger. Just on the off chance. And then I'm going to continue sewing. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of our row of stitching. Last couple of stitches. and put the all down, we don't need that.
and just go back. And that's going to be a bit tough, so I'm going to employ the pliers. And then one half stitch to return the thread to the inside. that off. Okay, so marked up the stitching, stitched the tab onto the retaining strap, polished up the edges and what we want to do now is stitch mark up for a row of stitching. Now we want to come in 160mm, so pop the ruler onto the strap and then with the scratch all mark up either side for our row stitching. Back to the dividers and then run down for our row stitching. So what we could do now, prick down for attaching to the lid. So, following that line, there's the end, there's our lines. I don't really want to belabor it, you, you've seen me make quite a few holes but again I'm just going to show you pop that onto that strap there straddle the line with the pricking iron and now whack. I'm ready for the other side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my ruler back on so I'll put my all uh, my pricking iron back in the hole and just butt my ruler up against it and then the other side, I shall butt the pricking iron up against the ruler, straddle the line, and I know that these two holes, which are going to be on the front of the bag that you're going to see, are absolutely perfectly lined up. And, and that's what I want. I don't want uh, a little bit of a stagger of one row of stitching starting slightly higher than the other. We want them looking very, very smart. Okay, let's attach the strap to the top of the bag. I'm going to do a back stitch. Again, go in for the second hole. Making sure that that is at a perfect right angle. Move that. rough up the leather inside that line. Seat it into the lines. A little bit on top. And then clap. Leave that to dry. I'm not really after belabouring the stitching point so much. The reason that I want to include this is if you're tempted to take the stitch all the way up to the edge of the bag here, there is going to be a row of stitching going at least an inch above this tab. So you're going to need to lift this off to get to that row of stitching. And this is why we've stopped our row of stitching short. To give us space to get in behind there to continue that row of stitching for the gusset. Okay, we're getting there. So the straps are stitched on. They'll go round and attach the front of the bag. Now it's time to begin to attach the gusset. But what we want to do first 
is attach the pockets where they're going to go. So what we want first and foremost, we're going to put this on here and drop it down a couple of mil, and then with our scratch all, we're going to mark the top either side. So, happy days. We've got our edges roughed up. And we'll go now as straight as we can. Have a line of glue. Then We'll line up the pocket exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, anyway, not bad at this. Okay, exactly the same that we did for the pocket on the back. Well, at least we know all the bits are the right size. Just to mark up where we're going to do our stitching line on the back of the bag, we use the front of the bag, we'll put it on the back, and then we're going to stop short. So we're going to make a mark just under the top of the edge. And that's where we're going to stop with regard to our row stitching. So we'll lift our tab up, following that line, we'll go down to the lift, and that way we can ensure we get a nice finish, front and back, that's very aesthetic. So there's our line marked up for our pricking work. Okay, so we've pricked this edge, we've got to here, we want to get to here. Now it's easy enough just to carry on, get to that point, but we've marked that quite specifically in relation to that's where the top of the gusset is going to meet. Now we could have slightly longer stitch, slightly shorter stitch. If we have that at the top, it may be that the stitch doesn't quite meet where we want to at the top of the gusset and there's a little bit of leather left over that will begin to lift off. That's going to begin to add strain. So what I'm going to do is rather than have a dodgy stitch right at the end where it's important, I'm going to stop. I'm going to now go to the end and put my pricking iron exactly where I want that stitch and I'm going to work my way back. And what I have here is this stitch is ever so slightly short. But because it's down here, it's on the back of the bag, even if it's on the front of the bag, the chances of you seeing that is very, very slim. So what we can do is work our iron back against those two holes and then hit it. So we're happy now here that we've got a short stitch, but it's very difficult to see. That's better than having a short stitch here, which would leave you a little bit of a tab over the end. The more care and effort you put into this, the better the result. Let's get a little bit closer to it. We're going around this bend. You kind of want to lift this up to get that bend in. Spin that round. around that bend again.
Beautiful. Jobs are good. We'll just take that off. Finishing off this edge. Beautiful. Happy with that. That's come out really nicely. So the next job is to back it so, up. So just a single back stitch, start off second hole in and we'll centre our thread. But quite a long thread, I want to do it in one hit, I don't want any joins, so I'm using a good couple of yards. So then go to the top hole, and stitch away from us, for one stitch. And then back towards us. So already we've got a good back stitch there, but on the second stitch down, what I want to do is take the thread over the top. So I've got couple of loops going over. I'm just going to make sure that I've not caught this. Move that nice and close and take up the tension. And there, I've got a back stitch and a loop over on the second one down. So that's nice and strong at the top of the bag. I'm going to do that at all four sections, the top of the bag, where the gusset meets the leather. And then continue on for the rest of the bag. Okay, so the gusset's now stitched on to the front of the bag. And we can see the uh, line of stitching quite nicely at the bottom there to give it a little bit of detail. Straps are on. And what we're ready to do now is attach it to the back of the bag. So we're going to glue up the edges of the gusset of the bag. And the next stage is stitch it on. So, we've got our marks of where we want the top of the bag to be and we're going to have to be careful about bending this the wrong way. I'm happy with that there so I'm going to put some pressure on and then take our time down the line. So we're asking the leather have quite a tight bend to bend two different ways around the corner of the bag and then back up against the edge of the bag and then before I stick that bit in I need to come back and sort this corner out. that has stuck very, very nicely along there. Now, don't worry about the bend around here being an odd shape. We're gonna worry about getting that in the right shape. We'll add a little bit of moisture to that to get the creases out and make sure that that looks really, really nice when we're done. Okay, now, because it's quite 
a bulky item. And I can't put the clam between the uh, I can't put the uh, the object between the clam that I normally use. It's uh, it's too big. What I've got is a chock of wood inside that uh, just happens to to fit nicely. So I'll pop that in there to add a little bit of substance to it, and then I put it in my Fred Moreau clam. Now Fred's a chap who lives in France. He makes these clams by hand, and I gotta say they are just like a piece of furniture the beautiful the thought that he's put in to making these is is quite fantastic he's done an amazing job i mean there's a place here this is padded and covered with leather for you to uh rest your wrist for when you're sewing so you, you don't get uh, issues with your wrist leaning on a hard bit of wood I'm quite pleased with the opportunity to be fair to uh, to show off the clam. It's the first opportunity since I got it to actually show it off and uh, you can see that it works nicely. It would probably work an awful lot nicer if I wasn't trying to stitch something that is actually quite bulky and awkward because I'm having to stitch into a channel if you like because the back of the needle is catching the back of the bag so it's not like I've got a flat access on either side and uh, to get the needle back through is a little bit awkward but if everything was easy where would the challenge be? Okay, that's the bag stitched, front and back, all done, gussets on, straps on. Now I've just finished the stitching, we've still got the edges to sort out and we've got these little straps either side to sort out, but in essence we're getting there. So what we're going to do first and foremost is we want to have a look at these little straps. Now the stitching stops short, the strap goes on, but what we want to do is we want to attach this strap with the Sam Brown stud a little bit shorter than the bag will fully extend. Add the Sam Brown stud, and what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of Loctite locking glue on there. Jobs are good. How's that? That'll stop it from pulling against the seams and that'll stop the strap pulling against the top of the stitch. So, just having a look, bit of uh, rounded stick, and pop that into the bottom of the bag and then just round those corners out and there we are exactly how they should be exactly the same again work those creases out there we are that's nicely done complete and for the techies out there that are interested Three mil brown conker, two pocket, one compartment, fold over, flap. All the dimensions, all the specifications to make this bag are available. And if you email me the details, I will send you the dimensions.
I hope you enjoy. Take care.